OK, we came quite a long way if you followed this far. This is what you should have by now if you're following the tutorial exactly. Now, I've added a couple of extra segments into the tail just to make it bend over better. Um, you can add as many segments as you want, just remember. I mean, that's about the optimum size for the tail. And when I have it linked so it's bending over the top, you'll see what I mean. So, now it's about time to just hide unselected and leave us the torso showing. Because we're going to start by creating a box which is going to become our actual torso itself. So, I'm just going to use auto grid so I can get roughly the right size here. And this is the shape we're going to start making our torso from. Just about that high there. Okay, so what I can do now is right click, convert to, editable polygon, and then I'm going to hide everything else as well. So hide unselected. And I can work just entirely on this object here. Now, I'm just going to click on the bottom, delete that. I'm going to tessellate the remainder. Press F4 so I can see what I've done. And I want to delete half of it. So I'm going to get rid of this side. So I can use the symmetry modifier, which I'm now going to kick in. I don't need to explain what I'm doing here. You'll have done it by now a few times. There we go. And pin and show. OK, so the next thing we have to do now is start dragging this to make a kind of torso shape, but also maintain the science fiction aspect of our model. So, looking at it, this is the side here. I'm going to drop into the front viewport and I'm going to start doing some cutting. So, quick slice down here and across there. And that should be the basis for us to start on. Now over here, select by vertex, I'm going to move these ones in. Like so. Now this one here that I've just created at random, I want to pull out a bit like that. OK, now drop into perspective viewport again. And what we're doing here really is trying to assemble the back this creation that we're building. I'm going to move these in. That's giving him a waist. Or her. Could be a girly. Move this in. I'm also going to move this in a bit. And what we're trying to do is just obtain a rough shape of a male torso. I mean, you know, if you want to make it look like a girl, you can just stick a pair of big boobies on the front. Maybe a Xena warrior princess type outfit. There we go. Just, uh, you know, I don't want to see it. Okay, now here, we're going to have to start creating the chest. So, we're going to create a nice pair of man boobs couple of ways to do this. An easy way of doing it really will be if I select this vertex here and this one and we chamfer them. Chamfering does that. Now it's a bit of a hard edge on the side there so I'm going to have to smooth that down a bit. You'll notice I haven't used any actual, um, no, what do you call it, NERM subdivision just yet because I want to start editing the actual raw model itself before I do. So. There we go. Okay. Now we've got a nice shape for the man boobs there. I'm going to do a quick cut just across the top here at a diagonal again. Because the classic man boob does not reach all the way down like that. And now selecting both of these. And I'm going to do a hinge from edge. And I'm going to do it freehand and do it from the top edge. There we are. I'm 
things misshaped to start with. Quite big amount of boobs. And now I'm going to push this line in a bit. Because, you know, we don't want him to look perky. Perky equals bad. And let's just turn off show end result. Then I can select these lines a little bit easier. Select that one and that one. Turn show end result on again. I'm just going to pull these over. Just so that his man boobs separate a bit at the bottom. There we go. I'm getting a nice man booby shape here. Now select vertex here. I'm going to do another chamfer. I need to start developing the area where his heads are going to be. I'm going to move this one up a bit as well. Do another chamfer just here. Accidentally chamfered that earlier, so I'll just move that up now. And now we can do a chamfer. Here we are. Okay, and I'm going to cut these holes out of the actual model itself. There's a reason for that. Now down here is where the good old belly and ab muscles are going to be. It's up to you if you want to have a go. If you, do you want to have a crack at making the ab muscles? Well, it's up to you. It's not that difficult. Getting it looking good? Well, that's difficult. So we'll do another chamfer. There we go. And now we can do some cuts. Another one straight across here. And then one here. Decide which one the belly button is going to go on, which I think is this one. Except it doesn't need a belly button because it's a monster. So, created science fiction object. But it's entirely up to you whether or not you want to create the belly button. Now I'm going to bevel these back, but I don't want to bevel them all at once, so I'm going to bevel by polygon then click cancel and then do it anyway. That way I've got more control over the operation. Now I'm showing you this, but this is only the way that, you know, I would do it and in fact am doing it. I mean, if you've got a better way of doing it already, then do that. got to remember that these tutorials are optimised for you guys, so that will get as much information over in as short a possible as time. There we go. It's got some nice shaping there. Now I'm just going to move this corner in here, get rid of the nice, ha nasty hard shape. And maybe insert another cut, just to break this up a bit. About there, over to there. There we are. Okay, so we've got a basic shape in, so we can now turn on NERM subdivision. And as you see, we're starting to develop a bit of a shape on it. You can see the man boobies and how they fit in now. I need to collapse the top of the man boobies because they more look more like giant eyes at the moment. So I'm going to turn num nums <laughs> nerm subdivision off. Zoom in. And click and click. Same again. There we go. Now I can zoom out. And let's have a look at what we get now. There we are, that's better. Starting to get a shape that we can actually work with. Got the armholes in place, they're a bit narrow, but we can widen those out very easily. And the neck's uh, rather surreal, but don't worry about that. So, looking at this, 
Okay, so what's left now is we're going to start sculpting this to look more like want our end result to look, and then of course we're going to hack holes in it and do all sorts of unpleasant things to it. So, turn that off again, and let's start shaping it in. So, this part here comes right in, because this is where the pelvis is formed. This part here comes in, because there's some side muscles come through just around here, which I'll simulate by merely dragging this one forward. Same goes with this one, so I drag these two forward a bit. I'm going to make a cut actually to make it a little bit easier. There we go. Now I can select this one here and bring that out a bit like that. I'm going to do another cut just up to here. There we go. And I think possibly a target weld. I want to move this one up. There we go. The job you've got now is, of course, to constantly, constantly keep checking your model because, unfortunately, you have to try and maintain it looking as much like a torso as you possibly can. Now I want to pull these out, but I can't pull them out too far because this line here will intersect, and we don't want that. So what we can do is, I'm afraid, you probably guessed already, make a couple more cuts. You don't want to make too many cuts, because when you do that, the nerm smoothing isn't going to work at all, and then you're going to have problems. So, select these ones again. There we go. And just shift those out. As you see now, you can bring them out as far as you want. Now I'll make the basis for our arm unit when we attach it. And remember it's a machine, not a human, so it is going to be a unit. Okay. Nerm subdivision back on again. And you can see the changes that would have been made just by doing that. We're starting to obtain some nice shapes. Okay. So let's define some lines now by doing a quick chamfer just here. And maybe up as far as there. And just a tiny chamfer, not very much. There we go. By doing that now, when we go into our NERM subdivision, you can see it's put a quite a weighted line in there now. It's literally defining our piece. So down here if you turn that on you can now see where your lines are by the way, which is very useful. You can start adding in example we can extrude inwards. Quite useful for getting a kind of unreal looking object in there if you wanted. like that. Kind of breaks the model up a bit, which is quite nice. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z again. I'm going to continue selecting my line all the way around till I get to the back. There we are. And now what I want to do is do my chamfer. No, actually not a chamfer. My extrude, sorry. And I'm going to reduce my extrusion base width. Once I've, uh, hang on, made sure I've selected this line as well. There we go. So I've reduced my extrusion base width, like that. And it creates a rather nice line, which definitely defines the back of this model. Like that. And just click OK. Now, nip down here, up my iterations a little, press F4 so I can't see it, the lines dividing it. And you see we're starting to get a nice sci-fi shape here, the alien -y noduli at the front, it's quite amusing. So at the back now we want to start defining this as it's supposed to be, which is a sci-fi object. So I'm going to crank down the iterations again. Okay, and 
country over here I'm going to get rid of just for the moment I click convert to edible polygon ok it's time to do some cleaning so I'm going to detach those that's going to become our rear panel now around to the front here have a look at this I don't think we need to, need to muck about with that piece actually. So let's do something over here instead. We want to be able to show the person who's looking at this that we are making and dealing with a science fiction object as opposed to a real life object. So I'm going to extrude this by 0 0.001 again. Just click OK. Then if I go into this viewport and just click view align that will flatten out nicely for me over here in my perspective view and of course it's still nice and angular which I like press F3, I'm just going to drag that in there we go Okay. good, we can mess around with the inside there now uh, then I don't know why I detached that piece there actually, I think I'm just going to attach it back on again and then if I select my polygon select these three here and just do an inset there we are and now just going to do a small extrude click OK then for my small extrude again nip into this viewport and just view a line because this is where we're going to be putting our gubbins our bits big pipes and other fun things like that there we go and I think possibly another one up here well no possibly about it I think definitely another one up here so I haven't got one up here in my sketch but I'm putting one anyway there we go and extrude, click OK to view a line there we are back now the lack of detail in this torso and the lack of reality is going to be augmented by the extreme amounts of weird science fiction-y pipey work and electronics and gizmos and levers and all sorts of other insane things that make no real sense at all when it comes down to it okay now then now we have some fun senor that's right we're going to so let's move this over here a bit let's go and look at the neck and the neck is definitely not right move this back in and this one there we go ok slam symmetry back on again Now if we look, we've got a little bit of overlapping going on, I suspect. Let's have a check by... Oh, no we haven't. Got an exact match on. That's cool. OK, going to collapse this now. There we are. Let's zoom in on the front here. Where have we got these amusing things? Grow them. There we are. Probably grow them a bit more actually. Let's have a look. Mm. There we are. And I'm going to take this piece out. 
bye bye and I'm going to replace it so all I'm doing is just joining these dots together to make a big old patch that's going to sit over the top Extrude on it. Click OK. And then just shunt it back in. And about there. Gives it some nice sharp edges. Now down here. We can do the same again. this round so we can see better. Let's look at these central three. Take off this section. There we go. And then start creating again this one I'm going to create four polygons. Remember if you're not working to a set artistic schedule then you're just doing it for yourself and you've done the concepts and now you're working on the drawings. Adapt. It's fun. If you think hmm, maybe this would benefit from such and such then it probably will and it's worth giving it a try. I'm going to just select these middle two now. Carl, just raise this polygon, sorry, vertex here. Just make sure I'm not selecting any else by mistake. There we go. Bring them down a little bit, get them to a nice even shape. It's swaying a little bit to one side there, so let's straighten it out. There we are. Now I'm going to select both these and I want to inset by poly. Click OK. And then a tiny extrude and an old mesh smooth there. And I think for this one we're going to extrude these two in. then carefully selecting these ones I want to extrude these ones out like that there's two nice little plugs there that we can work on now then up here in this big flat panel we've got in the tummy sorry chest start adding some more details, so I'll put a cylinder in. It's got auto grid turned on as usual. I'm going to bring that out. Convert to edible polygon. Quite an interesting shape really when you think about it, isn't it? And then inside there I'm also going to put some boxes. And as I'm not using the symmetry anymore, object and just attach these things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think that should be about that. 
and of course we can assign individual te textures to each of those. Now then, what do we do with this bit here? Well, if ever there was a section that requires big enormous chunky pipes, I think that's it. From there, there, and there, all connecting it to its bottom piece, which is obviously going to allow rotation and revolving of the torso. So, let us pull back a bit. There we go. Now if you use Nerm subdivision, by the way, to smooth this up some more, then that's great, but you'll notice it does bad things in the special little holes we've made. And we don't want that. Makes it look too organic. <coughs> so, close that off. And it's start, time to start making caps as well for the head. We don't really need one for the bottom. So, we'll do one for the arms, just in here. to where the head goes. Same again, just creating our polygon. making sure we get the right polygon when we create as well. Very important. As you see there, we've made an impossible shape. Which is of no use to us whatsoever. So just select it and delete it again. And just create it again. As I say, don't be tempted to use cap unless you want to spend time repairing your model. I showed how to repair a model after a bad cap last time, so... It's not too much of a hassle, I suppose, but uh, I still don't recommend it. Okay, so here's our basic model now. Got some nice little slots and areas in there where things plug in. And it looks enough like a piece of anatomy to carry the top, even though it has no nips. We really need to mesh smooth it a little bit more. So, what we can do is just select by this object here and just run a mesh smooth over it. There, uh, that actually has helped. Yeah, that's helped quite a lot. Good. Okay then. So now what we need to do is start securing this to the base and begin adding in further details. So we need to create the base that it's going to actually connect to the bottom with. So let's go over here to our magic telly, or the display button as some people call it, and click unhide by name. And we pick the chassis. There it is. Now at the moment this is resting directly on top of the chassis. That's not actually going to happen though, so let's move that up. Also, you notice it's not fitting in with the chassis yet. It's far too, I don't know, solid, clanky. This is solid and clanky. This is organic. We need to be able to blend the two together. So, the way we're going to do that is using a cylinder first. And let's reduce the radius on that somewhat. I'm going to bring that over here. Let's get it 
centralised as much as possible before we bring the radius down again. Because this is going to be the base on which we attach the torso rotation systems and things like that. Okay, just crank the height up. I'm going to stick one, two, no, not cab segments, height segments. Okay, press F4, have a look at our model. Right click, convert to, editable polygon. Now we're just going to select this bit and this bit and hide unselected. And now what we have to do is basically build a link between this and this and stop this looking so damn fleshy flesh equal bad in this respect so bring this piece up and then we're going to start by doing a bevel now before we do actually let's look at this model here I'm just going to scoot this off to one side. Bye bye. Now, we've got quite a nice shape here, a nice model. And we're going to, as you probably told by now, I'm going to bevel a larger, flatter area on top. Before we do that, though, maybe we should keep in with the whole style of the model that we're going to be making. So, I'm going to select by polygon and just. Uh, wrong object. Select by polygon. I just want to detach these. So, I'm going to call this. Torso base pivot. And this piece at the bottom here I'm going to call torso base pivot connector. Okay, now what I want to do is be able to add a lot of detail to this and make it look cool but I don't want to have to repeat what I'm going to be doing over and over again so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a polygon off this Let's select the right object again here we are, select a polygon off this and I want to use that as the basis for creating a new piece so I'm going to zoom in and inset there we go now I'm going to squash it a bit. There we are. And I can do a minor extrude. Only about 0 0.001 again. Or 0 0.1 even. Nah, 0 0.001. There we go. Click OK. Now, by doing that, I can then just uh, detach it temporarily. OK. Actually, before I do, cancel that. I'm going to Mesh Smooth and Grow Delete because we're getting polygon heavy. We don't want to create too many of the damn things. Create a single polygon instead just to go here. There we go. Now, going to slip, slip. I really do worry sometimes. Slip around this side, and I want to hinge from edge. Pick my hinge. I'm going to pick this one here. Take it up to 90 degrees, and bang in some segments. That should be enough. Click OK, and now I'm going to grow it and attach. I'm going to call this temp oops detach 01 reason being, well this has got what, 18 sides and we want 18 of these effects to go around the outside of it so select this and I'm just going to delete the top one here because we don't need it now the pivot point's already in the middle here, so if we do a quick calculation, zoom in over this side, there we are, if we do a quick calculation, if we've got 18 sides, we divide that into 360 and see what we get, which is 20 degrees, 
So now all we've got to do is, we can use angle snap as well by the way, very useful. Rotate this round by 20 degrees whilst copying 17 times. There we are, 20 degrees. 17 copies, click OK, and there we go. Good old snap to. So now, we nip back down here again. I'm just going to zoom out. And turn this over. And I can attach all these little darlings just here. In you go. The fine beauties. There we are. That's how easy it was just to add a big sodding load of details all the way around here. Now we can select this top piece here and I'm going to bevel it by height of uh, minus 0.001 and outline amount just above these things here there we go and click OK now I'm going to extrude this upwards like that and click OK now it's time to start moving our torso into the position that we want it in. So I'm going to move it forwards. And it's probably best if I go into the top viewport for this if possible. I'm just going to move it rearwards as much as possible as well. So about there. Yep, that looks about right. Just a little bit more away from us. Okay. Now, drop into our perspective view. I'm going to click F4 so that I don't have to see all those mad polys. And zoom in. I'm going to bring it down to intersection. There we go. Oops, there. And now we're at the point where we can connect that to that and start building our big weird mechanical fellas. <laughs> so, torso base pivot, and we're just going to attach that. Because of course that rotates on this anyway. Okay, now over here, I want to create a cylinder just coming out of here, which is going to become a piston for us. So, cylinder. There we are. And take it down to one height segment. And move it along a bit. And I'm going to make an exact copy of it over here, just using clone tools. Click OK. And what we want is for these two to have a piston running down out of the back. And I'd like it, really, if they were at an angle. So, I think I'm going to delete these off again, just quickly. If we go into this, select it as polygons there, hinge from edge, and oops, on one segment pick our hinge and I want it to be this one I think. Is that right? Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks right. I can't see any mad intersections going on so I'll assume that's correct. Excellent. Now I can create my cylinder. And bring it down like that. And the same again over here. Slide it across a bit. There we go. Convert to edible polygon. I'm going to attach these two to this already. One, two. And now select the end polygons here. And I want to inset. And bevel it back. OK. 
okay and now extrude this out until we get to a good height and rotate it down a bit there we are as you see now already we're starting to make a much more whoops one a much more appropriate shape for what we need now then I'm going to do a couple of things here. So I want to bevel this. Like that. And I should have two nice little points there that I can just rotate. Like that. and now I can just extrude them straight down until they intersect with the ground there we go and they're gone so that's that part done next <laughs> it's like a goofy test skull doesn't it? next we want to make some pieces coming down here and do some bits with them so I'm going to create some pipe work again Simple cylinder again this time. And all we're doing really is just driving the cylinder through the rest of the model. Move that over there. Until it goes to the bottom, like that. Same again on this side. Out there. Bring it out and down. There we go. See what I mean about moving away now from the actual uh, mechanical shape that we started off, uh, organic shape we started off with. Now then, oops, I'm going to select this and I want to attach these pieces on as well because they ain't going to be animated. The only time you'd need to animate these really is if you blew the model to pieces. And uh, I'm not going to do a tutorial on that, so don't get your hopes up. Okay, here it'll do. Let's do a minor extrude at 0.001 again. Okay. Do a mesh smooth, maybe an organic shape like that, which isn't much use to us. Let's break that down. We'll just do it by one. Here we are. So extrude, okay. Mesh smooth, make a short pipe instead. Click grow. And we want to hinge from edge, pick hinge. Going to pick this one, I think. Do an angle of approximately 90 degrees make sure we're picking the correct downed edge there we are 90 degrees put some segments in now extrude this down vertexes too. Don't worry, we're going to be putting things on the bottom to detract from the end pieces, just vanishing. Okay. Let's go around this side again. So we can do over here.
see what I mean. Besides which, I've also forgotten to mesh smooth it. Okay, let's zoom in. I want to hinge this one here. There we go. Good. Click OK. Back out a bit. Down. And extrude this bit down as well. There we go. Just to the floor and off it goes. Okay, so we've got a big pipe on the front now that I want to do. And for that, we really need to find a nice straight line to uh, work it from. And there's one here, ironically. So, start working on the business at hand. I want to make a clone of two polygons. I'm just going to drag those out. OK. And zoom extends by those little fellas down there. Because I want to straighten it up. Nice straight line on the top. There we go. Doesn't matter if it's not perfectly straight, remember the word chaos? In fact, if I want a completely straight line between these two, I'm being stupid, aren't I? I'm going to use a target weld. Save myself about a minute's work. There we go. It's a completely flat line. Right. Now that I've uh, discovered my own amazing stupidity, we can get back to doing this. And what we want is a big fat pipe just here. So, bevel. Straight out. building needless detail. It's up to you how you want to do yours. I like doing mine like this. There we are. So once I've got that more or less right, which it is, I'm going to hinge from edge. Pick my hinge and it's going to be this one. Well then, look at that angle. That's a madly big angle. I'm pretty sure, in fact, it's the wrong hinge. That's more like it. Okay, if we're going to do that, I think I should move this one up just a bit. That'll give us a sh slightly sharper angle to work on. Hinge from edge, pick hinge, this one. Ew. It's not right. That's right. Okay, now let's reduce this angle down a little bit. Click OK. And <coughs> bye bye. There we are. Now selecting this one, extrude down again. And we can do a bevel. Oop, got the wrong piece selected again. Damn it. There we go. There we go. shapes here put together using just the bevel tool. And then delete bottom one. There we go. 
as you see our torso is now moving well away from the organic stage now then if you remember a while ago we made those interesting little holes there I think we should just leave those and use them as some sort of weird plug that doesn't actually do anything I quite like that idea so up here now we've got these two so having thought about these for a few minutes what I was going to do was have pipes coming straight down here but uh, I don't think that would look as effective to be honest as perhaps putting some completely pointless effects in so what I'm going to do first is just nip over here into our left viewport, turn the grid off and view a line, so now these will be nice and straight then in our perspective viewport I'm going to scoot in and I want to do some target welding well, actually no, it might be easier just to cut them out completely and rebuild them bye bye because what I want is a pair of shapes that I can use to build some work that's going to go over his shoulders. So turn off create and extrude by 0.001. There we go. Click OK. Actually, before I do that, I think I should probably narrow them in as well. So they're box shaped, then extrude, then smooth. Now look at that shape, that's not a very good shape for what we want. And the reason we've got that shape is because there's too many vertexes around the outside. So we can sort that out. We'll just drag these out. And we can repair these and then put them back in again. So what we're doing is a bit of target welding that way we end up with only four vertexes on the sides here select these, I can push them back into place again. There we go, I'll push them in slightly. Do a small extrude. And then if I do a mesh smooth now, we've got our nice even shape that we like so much. There we go. So, extrude these out. And then I'm just going to click shrink. Don't even have to bevel it then. Let's have a look around here. Yep, they're looking good. So we're going to use a hinge from edge. I'm going to pick our hinge. We need to make sure we're picking the right one. Okay, now we need to find the right hinge to be doing this from. And of course, remember what I said last time. I'm just going to click cancel here. If we need a straight line, we can just use a target weld. So, target weld. And that is a straight line. Okay. Now then, hinge from edge. Where's it gone? I would appear to have lost it. Now that is hinge from edge. I'm going to pick my hinge, and it's going to be this one. And now if we look, they're both curving up nicely. to make it a 180 degree turn so they're facing completely backwards now to lob some segments in for that click OK and now I'm going to insert these down Let's 
distribute these straight over. Actually, I'll take those back. And I want to get this just right if we can, so we want to get a good hinge point. So I'm going to extrude these all the way over again. There we go. Now we need a nice area for it to come straight down on, so these should do. Hinge from edge on here. Mm, that was a little bit too far, possibly. Don't worry about this bump here because I'm just about to fix that. So I'm going to reduce the segments down. Just to make it slightly easier to repair. I can just tug that up a bit. There we go. And now to extrude these all the way down. Before we do that though, I'm just going to insert them a teeny bit. It just breaks up straight angles in the scene a bit. Okay, and now extrude them down. There we go. And click OK. And then bevel it. soft selection, which we're going to use. And we don't want it to affect every single vertex in the entire thing, but we, don't want it to affect, we do want it to affect this one, so we can bring them in a bit. Like that. That way the ball joints for the arms will fit onto there properly. There we go. Just F4. Plenty of freedom there for the arms to move about. And our head is going to come through these pipes here. On press F4. This bit here. It's going to increase the fall off. There we go. Okay then. So we've got our top connection torso here. It's quite a nice complex model as well, which I like. Turn off soft selection. Have to insert that a little bit. Set it twice. The second time, I'm going to click Grow and then deselect the inside one. Zoom in a little bit. And we're going to extrude this downwards. There we are. Quite a nice shape. Finally, I'm going to apply a smooth modifier for this bit and click Auto Smooth. 
and then just collapse that stack there. And now all that's left to do is connect this piece here on the front. So, I'm going to do one, two here. One, two. Close the soft selection bit there. And I want to insert by polygon. Click OK. Then I want to extrude a very small amount. Like that. Apply them both a nice mesh smooth. Chink. There we go. Ow. Got a bit of a stiff knee here. Grow them out a bit. And then taking the first one here, I'm going to hinge from edge. Pick my hinge and it's going to be there. 90 degrees. Uh, five segments. Uh, maybe a bit more than that, who knows. Sod it, eight segments. I'm feeling generous. Click OK and then click Delete. Bye bye. Actually, I'll leave that one on. And then over here, hinge from edge, pick my hinge, it's that one. Click OK. And let's zoom back. I'm going to create ourselves some nice panels here. Oops. Slip by polygon. And use a bevel. Reduce the outline amount. And bevel it inwards. Click apply. Leave those two there. Select these, and we're nearly done. Click OK, and that, and that. And then grow it. Finally, a nice hinge from edge. Pick our hinge, and it's this one. Click OK. These ones, because we're doing this anyway, we may as well just keep it going. We 
can just assume this is a exciting part of the engine or something. And take it to 180 degrees right the way over the top. Uh, put some segments in there. Twelve should be enough. Click OK. Delete the polygons we will never ever see again. We'll get rid of that. Select that one. Very useful for making sci-fi is this piece. Terrifying torso y thing. Ooh, you boogie. So now if we unhide by name our chassis part one, you can see how it fits on at last. And I think because this is the front, oop, I think because of the front of the models here. I can probably make it a bit more understandable if I just select this. I'm just going to hide these bits here. really is try and lift these things up, which we can do if Max isn't being so pig-headed. final editing just to this piece here so that we can actually use it The 
piece that we've done for this part of the tutorial. So, yet again, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you in the next bit.